Welcome to the Morning Swim Show for Friday, July 2nd, 2010. I'm your host, Peter Bush. In the Phoenix Monitor today, we'll talk to Brian Brown. He's the head coach of Asphalt Green Unified Aquatics in New York City. They go by the team name Agua. And Coach Brown has at least one up-and-coming sprint star that caught our attention already this summer. He joins us right now to talk about it from New York, New York. Coach, welcome to the Morning Swim Show. How are you doing? Great. Thanks for having me. Well, obviously, we're talking about Leah Neal in our introduction there. Tell us um, about Leah for people who don't know. Uh, well, Leah's a 15-year-old uh, freestyler. Um, she's been on the team for a number of years here, and she's uh, been a national record holder at age 10, 12, and uh, nearly at 14. Uh, but she's been on the rise in the 50 and 100 freestyle for a while. Um, and she's just a young, uh, uh, young talent that we're happy to work with. She just missed the, uh, the national age group record in her age group at the Santa Clara meet in the 50, just by 1 100th, I believe. Now, what is, uh, what's kind of the scouting report on Leah? Uh, well, Leah's uh, a great finisher. She's a great competitor. Uh, and she usually rises to the occasion in the big meets. Um, so you can count on her to do that. Uh, we currently are, are working on uh, the beginning of her races. She, um, if you had a watch on it, she almost negative splits these 50-meter uh, races, which is uh, interesting. She kind of gains speed like a locomotive, so we want to get her out a little bit faster. Sorry, Coach. I'm gonna, we're going to have to do a quick edit there. My microphone was cutting out. You were fine. I'm just going to uh, start from my next question. Again, your, your, okay. yours was fine. I heard the whole thing, but my microphone, we had to do a quick battery switch. Okay. Garrett, you ready? Yeah. Okay. All right, so you're talking about, talking about closing speed with Leah. Is there something that you do in training that, uh, that allows her to do that? Um, well, she's naturally been uh, good at getting her hand on the wall, uh, the way most uh, champions are. So it's not so much a training as just uh, reminding her of the need to uh, finish hard. And uh, she's very competitive uh, when it comes to a race. So um, that's not something that we have to focus on. We're really more focused on the beginning of the race and trying to get her up and uh, up with the competition right away because I'm usually not worried about the finish. She, she does a great job there. All right, in general with Aqua, what's your, uh, what's your training philosophy with the kids? Uh, we have a pretty um, traditional uh, idea about training. Uh, we like to do a lot of aerobic background with the athletes and uh, we feel like if we do distance freestyle and IM training uh, with the athletes that we're developing, that um, their talents will show themselves later on uh, as they become senior level athletes and or as they become uh, co collegiate athlete athletes. So, AKA, you, you like to do a lot of yardage with the kids. Uh, yes, we do. We do a good bit of yardage um, uh, for all of our athletes, whether they're quote unquote sprinters or distance people. I just feel like uh, we have a saying, uh, fitter is faster, and um, if they're fitter in the water and we can do that aerobically, I feel like that pays long-term benefits because we're trying to set them up to be good over a long period of time. What do you say to coaches will obviously disagree with you with the sprinters. If they think they're, you know, they're sprint talents, then they think you can actually wear them down and you know, make them worse by giving them nothing but yardage. Uh, you cut out. I can't hear you. I was asking, some coaches would disagree. They would say, you know, with a sprint specialist, they need to be focusing more on speed and less on yardage. What do you think? Um, I, I think that uh, history has shown that um, people that focus on um, uh, doing distance training for developing athletes uh, wind up having a longer career. Uh, and, now, the athletes that we have are not fully developed. They, they still grow more. They still get stronger. And I think there's plenty of room for specificity uh, later on in their career. Now, it's not to say that we don't do any sprint training or, or anything else. We, we certainly do, but we try to hit all the four bases of what I think are necessary for uh, an athlete, and that would be endurance and speed, uh, technique, and power. So that's sort of how we look at it, but we, we try not to specify too much too early. Uh, tell me about the history of your club. You know, the Northeast has some great clubs going back years and years and years. We don't hear too much about club swimming in New York City, though. Uh, right. Well, the, the club's been here for um, about 
12 or 14 years, um, and I've been here for, I guess closer to 14 years, I've been here um, for eight years, and um, it's just been trying to develop athletes in the city environment, and um, it's not your traditional environment. Um, there are no summer leagues here where kids uh, naturally drift towards clubs. So it's a little bit of a challenge, and it's taken a while for it to gain some momentum. But, um, you know, we're doing all right right now. Well, good luck with the rest of the summer. It's going to be interesting to watch uh, Leah and some of the other real young, budding sprint stars in the country right now. It seems like there's, a, there's definitely a good young group between Missy Franklin and Dagny Knudsen of uh, high school age kids that uh, could really be the future of American swimming. Well, that's what we're hoping. I think um, uh, I can speak for Leah. She loves to race against those uh, young ladies, but she also loves to race against the uh, older athletes that we see at these Grand Prix meets, and uh, it should just make for a good quality competition. I really uh, am enjoying it. Well, Coach Brown, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Appreciate right. it. It's Coach Brian Brown joining us in the Finis Monitor from New York City. And that's it for the show today. I'm Peter Bush reminding you to keep your head down at the finish. The July issue of Swimming World Magazine offers a preview of the names and faces likely to make a mark at the USA Swimming Nationals and the Pan Pacific Championships. On the cover is Nick Thoman, one of the names in a crowded field of American backstrokers vying for a spot on the Pan Pac team. John Lone's profile on page 14 details Thoman's search for a training group that would fit him and how he has found it at Swim Mat Carolina. On page 11, we also look back to August 20th, 1989, when four American swimmers broke four world records in four different events in six hours at the Pan Pac Championships. USC's win at the Women's NCAA Water Polo Tournament is featured on page 16, where the Trojans defeated cross-town rival UCLA and ended their five-year championship winning streak. Our swim section features a humorous look at some of the rookie mistakes veteran swimmer Carlin Pipes Nielsen has made in her life, and some weight exercises to help people get stronger as they grow older. The swimming technique section has a Q&A with Brett Hawk, the head coach at Auburn University, who continues to build a legacy of success there. The Aquajets of Minnesota set three National Relay age group records, and they are featured in the Junior Swimmer section record setters, along with Olivia Anderson. Wayne Goldsmith rounds out the issue with a look at 22 tips for conducting a great taper. If you're not a subscriber to Swimming World magazine, give yourself to the dog side and go to SwimmingWorld.com and click on the subscribe link.